I am very glad to be again uh, in the Biyoga uh, Beyond uh, Symposium organized by the European Yoga Federation. And I am very happy and grateful uh, for you for this invitation. We are doing uh, this presentation about the yoga of the house. At the name of the Institute of Vedic Architecture and City Planning from Latin America. We are going to speak about the yoga of the house. Usually we don't link very much these, uh, these terms, but first we need to uh, let to know uh, everyone what's yoga and what's a house. When we refer to yoga, we refer to the meaning of the word of yoga, that means union, refers to unity consciousness, to harmony, to enlightenment, the feeling of happiness and bliss, and, bliss, and uh, to be established in the self, in your own self. When we speak about the house, we speak about the home, the warmth to be together, the family together, feeling safe, happiness that comes from living together with all of our family, growth and prosperity, and the feeling to be established in our own life from where we can uh, spread all our intelligence and creativity uh, all around. When we refer to the word yoga, we should uh, uh, start by the definition of yoga that is given by Maharshi Veda Vyasa in, the, in his Yoga Sutra Bhashya from the first, uh, uh, from the uh, first commentary that he is giving in uh, from the Yoga Sutra, no? And he said there, yoga ha samadhi. Yoga is samadhi. Yoga is the samadhi state. And he continues saying, yoga is the stage in which we are aware that consciousness permeates all that there is. In the Srimad Bhagatang, in the 11th chapter, says, parohi yoga manasaha samadhihi. That means the supreme transcendental yoga is when the mind is in samadhi. And uh, Veda Vyasa in the Mahabharata says, without living in the yoga state, happiness is not possible. Maharshi Patanjali in his second uh, Yoga Sutra in the first chapter says, Yoga ha chitta vritti niroda, that we can translate as yoga is the state, it's when consciousness is silent without movement, when all their fluctuations are in calm. And what is Samadhi? Maharshi Patanjali in the third chapter, in the third sutra says, when only the essence of or pure consciousness shines forth in the mind, as if devoided even of its own form, devoid of thought, that state of deep absorption is called samadhi. This state of samadhi is a state of consciousness when consciousness is knowing itself. And uh, a great architect from Finland that was living in USA uh, was referring also about consciousness. He said, everything is consciousness. In this resides the secret of how we are made. Know it. You can reach the ability to build the universe from knowing a simple leaf of grass. And Max Planck, the father of the modern physics, says, I consider consciousness as fundamental. Matter is a derivation of consciousness. So what is consciousness? Consciousness is the basic element of creation, is the only element of creation. Consciousness is living, vibrant, pure intelligence. 
consciousness its perception perceiving itself. Consciousness is all there is, says Dr. Tony Nader Maharaj Adiraj Rajaram. And Maharshi Mahesh Yogi says, Consciousness is primary, says everything that is physical in the universe is consciousness. And he continues, Consciousness is that one element in nature on the ground of which the infinite variety of creation is continuously emerging, growing, and dissolving. So everything is consciousness. The Rig Ved in the sixth mandala says, all forms in the universe are an image of the self. And the Vastu Sutra Upanishad in the second chapter says, Yatha Brahma Vidya Tata Rupa Prakya. That means the real knowledge of the form brings Brahma Vidya, the complete knowledge of Brahman, the totality. So knowing all this, of, of course, we can conclude that if we want to create a form, that form should be established in the self, established in consciousness. The architecture of consciousness or consciousness-based architecture. When we see this chart, for example, we see in the bottom of the chart this blue area that is the unified field or pure consciousness. From this unified field or from this pure consciousness, the main elements of creation starts to come up when this, this uh, super symmetry is breaking out and comes out the fields of form, the fields of, uh, 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 of energy, and the fields of matter. And these fields, when they combine between themselves, creates all what is in the universe. As it is happening, described by physics, we can say that this is uh, happening also in architecture. We have the three main areas of architecture that are the function, form, and structure that comes out from this unified field. And from that comes the house and comes all the cities, all what is created by, uh, by the human mind. So, as a lake uh, brings water to the river and water to the ocean through the river, you know, and uh, the lake is water, so the same creations from the unified field or from pure consciousness are pure consciousness. So, architecture and our cities are, are also pure consciousness. All aspects of architecture or vastu emerge from the unified field, from pure consciousness, the unity of time and space. Stapatya Ved is Vedic architecture in harmony with natural law. The Sanskrit word stapan means to establish, and Veda means knowledge of natural law. Stapatya Ved, then, is the Vedic knowledge to establish consciousness first in yourself. That means the state of yoga, as was described by Maharishi Veda Vyasa. Is the Vedic knowledge to establish the consciousness of the perception that all that there is, is consciousness. Is the Vedic knowledge that gives the procedures and techniques to establish all kind of human creations, architectural and urban spaces based in consciousness according with natural law. Stapatya Ved then is the architecture of consciousness. The purpose of the house then is to give happiness, growth, prosperity, protection, love. The purpose of house is to establish the state of yoga and samadhi in the people that's living in that house. The purpose of the house 
is to establish higher status of consciousness, enlightenment in every person that is living in the house. So enlightenment, higher states of consciousness just mean the natural state of happiness, of prosperity, of growth, of love that everybody should be living. So our houses have the power to give us these uh, qualities of life, of enlightenment, happiness, and growth, if they are building, built according with natural law, according with consciousness. But when our houses are not built according with these laws of nature, then our houses becomes our own stone to don't arrive to our goals, to don't feel happiness, to don't give that final step to enlightenment, to samadhi. So our houses can help us to reach the state of yoga or could be a, a, difficult, uh, a difficulty to reach that state. From cosmic structures to individual structures, all are natural law based. Cosmic structure, global structure, and individual structures are, a, are structured according with natural law, the laws that comes from the knowledge of Vastu or, or Stapatyavet. All the knowledge of Stapatyavet is in the main Vedic texts as Manasara, Vastu Shastra, Mayamata, Vastu Shastra, Brihat Samhita, Samarangam Sutradhar, Vishwakarma Vastu Shastra, Shilpa Ratna, Manushayaya Chandrika, and the Vastu Sutra Upanishad. Maharshi Mahesh Yogi was the revival of this knowledge who introduced transcendental meditation 50 years ago and opened the gates of enlightenment to millions of people. The main principles of this Vedic architecture, Stapatyavet, is proper orientation, proper placement of the activities and rooms according with solar and cosmic influences, right proportions, and the center of life, the Brahmastan. Health, happiness, and fortune are all influenced by the orientation of buildings. One of the main principles of Vedic architecture is the orientation, with the reference to the sun, that means towards east, and with reference to the air, to north and south poles, east and west, so in a cardinal proportions. The strongest influence of natural law comes from the sun. The brain cells are firing according with recent research in neuroscience, according with the orientation. When we are facing east, the firing patterns of neurons in thalamus uh, of the brain are altered by the dire direction one is facing, thus influencing the entire brain functioning and the whole physiology. Our brain functions as a magnet, as a, uh, as a compass, and uh, billions of magnets in the brain make it sensitive to orientation. So when we are facing east, the main orientation from where the sun are, is coming out, mm, that is more healthy for the function of our brain and for the function of our own thoughts. Different directions according with Stapatyavet are given different influences. For example, it's very auspicious when we have the entrance from the east, when the, our building is facing east. This gives influence of enlightenment, affluence, and fulfillment. When, when our building, our house, is facing north, it, this gives influence of prosperity and happiness. All other directions 
are not recommended by the Shastras, and the south entrance could have even destructive, destructive influences of problems and suffering. Doctors practicing Maharshi Vedic health are guiding by uh, one saying from the Astanga Sangraha Sutra Stanam that says that what should not live even one day in a building that is not according with Vastu. The house should be so designed that the different energies of the sun correspond to the specific functions and activities for each room when natural law always supports every aspect of our daily activity. So the placement of the rooms are according with the different energies of the sun from when it's coming around the sky, the heaven, no? So if we have a, an east a entrance a, getting the good energy from the sun, from the sunrise, the northeast area should be used for meditation or for worship, the north area for study, the northwest area for a guest, a guest room, the west area for a living room, the southwest area for a master bedroom, the south area for a dining, and the southeast for a kitchen. In the center, we have the Brahmastan that should be an open area, uh, and a whole and empty space that can organize the whole uh, of the space of all the house. People should know that misfortune are, and disease arise from lack of proper orientation of the house in which they live and work. Also, the proportions of the house are very important. They are very uh, specifically calculated by the people that's going to live there according with uh, specific uh, uh, formulas that allow the architect to calculate how are going to be the proportions of the house according with that person. Design principles based in orientation and symmetry establish that when the building is especially auspiciously established in, guard, in its garden, vast to perfect orientation plot, it becomes a real fortune creating hope, always blessing its inhabitants with perfect health, wealth, and wisdom. The outer proportions of the vast two buildings in terms of length, height, and width, and its auspicious dimension and symmetry are designed and calculated according with cosmic formulas stated in the ancient Vedic text. Creating symmetry and order, not just in the building, but in the, li in the life of the people that's living there. Continued violation of natural law day after day, year after year, through intercorrect orientation and placement, uh, brings results of widespread hazards of architecture. Between these hazards of architecture, we have that this comes from inauspicious quality of the site, inauspicious slope or shape, inauspicious position of water bodies as well or and other environmental factors. Wrongly placed entrance may contribute to inauspicious and negative influence, anger, aggression, constant fear, poverty, lack of vitality and success, and chronic diseases. When we have an auspicious past to that promotes positive evolutionary influence, buildings without auspicious past to could produce negative effects. So Stapatya Ved is the knowledge to establish our consciousness first in ourselves the state of yoga. In the Vedic knowledge, is the Vedic knowledge to establish the consciousness of perception than all that there is is consciousness. 
is the Vedic knowledge that gives the procedures and techniques to establish all kinds of human creations, architectural and urban spaces based in consciousness according with natural law. Some studies have shown that uh, when people live and work in these uh, kind of buildings, they report improvements in general well-being, quality of sleep, energy, relaxation level, dietary habits, happiness, mental clarity, and efficiency. Some of these uh, uh, studies we are going to, to see now. Uh, for example, this study shows when one wants to uh, 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 organize uh, uh, a jigsaw puzzle, no? it's shown that when you are facing the east, you can solve faster, quicker, and better uh, puzzle that, and also in the north and in the south and west the directions. If you are facing that, when you are solving the puzzle, then you are taking more time. So the brain is functioning better when we are facing east and north. This is another uh, research study that shows that when the people is living in, in vast homes, they feel 88% more happier. Mm -hmm. They are 68% healthier. And the students are 45 better in the school performance. At the level of success, we can see that 92% of the people living in vast two houses are feeling overall success. They feel that 75% of the relationship are improving. They feel also almost a 70% improvement in their profession and almost 70% improvement in their wealth. This is another study that shows that family relations improve almost in 80%. Fulfillment of the goals improve in more than 80%. The feeling of comfort and happiness in their home are of more than 90%. And the quality of life improves in more than 90% too. The mental health also improves in more than 80% the physical health in around 70%, the better sleep in 60%, and less stress in 85%. Also, creativity improves, as we see in this study that shows that verbal originality and figural originality improves when the people is living in vast homes. And you can ask yourself, that uh, if this uh, uh, orientation and position of the house and placement of the rooms can vary from the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. And uh, we, can, we have made a study that was published uh, in a very important uh, architectural journal about the sunlight orientation in Vedic architecture and the hemispheric effects. And that shows that you are having the same kind of effect if you are having a proper oriented house, if you are living in the northern hemisphere or in the southern hemisphere. The, in, this, in the northern hemisphere, for example, 88% feel more successful, and in the southern hemisphere, 85%, so almost same. More uh, wealth. 56% in the Northern Hemisphere and 48% in the Southern Hemisphere. More professional development, 55% in both hemispheres. Better decisions, 22% better in the Northern Hemisphere, 27% better in the Southern Hemisphere, as well in the improvement of creativity. In quality of life, also, we see in different areas uh, how 
in northern hemisphere and in southern hemisphere were almost uh, the same good effects. So everyone should live in a building with an ideal bus to design. Now we will see some examples of bus uh, uh, to houses. This is in Maharshi's Vedic city in Iowa, in USA, several uh, examples of houses. This is in Garden Village in Red Lesham, uh, in UK, no? different uh, designs there in England. This is Maharshi European Research University in Lodrop in Holland. Is the, the vast plan for the whole development of the area. Uh, this is a meditation center in Kentucky, USA. Another meditation center in Germany. This is a house, a vast house in Germany, looking from up, <laughs> no? And here are some uh, fortune creating homes, as are called, no? And buildings, uh, some, uh, some ones from the portfolio of the European houses. This is another example of a uh, 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 European house. These are uh, another vast home. And uh, we have seen some big houses. Now we will see some smaller houses, as this one in Finland, this one in Ukraine, this one in Greece is just uh, 80 square meters. And this one in Sweden, that is just uh, a, a pavilion of uh, 15 square meters, uh, a meditation and yoga area in the house built with the uh, proportions of Maharshi Stapatiavet. Now uh, we will see some of the houses and designs in Latin America made by, uh, by our office. This is a vast plan uh, outside Lima, the Peruvian capital. Uh, here is a a community, a vast community for 500 houses. This is one of the houses, as you may see, all there is very arid. Lima is the second largest city in the world in a desert. So uh, we have a very arid uh, landscape. This is another uh, condominium for 1,000 plots of 1,000 1, square meters, uh, is the first uh, ecological condominium. All the green areas that we are seeing here are cultivated. No? Then uh, this is the plan for all this uh, city, uh, ecological city. Uh, we can see the plan from the, from the sky. This is some years ago. You can see all the, the areas. Uh, from this development of for 1,000 homes. And this, some few more designs. This is a meditation center. Uh, this is the process of building of the meditation center in this area of the city. This is another home outside Lima. This is in Bogota. This one is in Chile. This one is in Mexico. This one is in Brazil. This one is in Argentina. So we can see that the purpose of the house is to give happiness, growth, prosperity, protection, and love. To establish the state of yoga and samadhi, to establish higher state of consciousness, enlightenment. And uh, uh, through our uh, institute, we give different services, a site evaluation, building, house pre-design, master city planning. And here we have uh, the contacts for in Latin America and in Europe, our west website maharshivastu.org for uh, 
for more information. Thank you very much, Swamiji, and thank you very much to the uh, European Federation of Yoga. Benissimo, thank benissimo. you very much. <laughs> okay.